Friday night game it is the Storm versus the Panthers. It's coming at you from Friday at Amy Park in Melbourne. The team lists are up in the screen. I'll talk through the Storm. I'll let you talk through the Penrith Panthers. But you've got Ryan Pappenhausen, Will Warbrick, Remus Smith, Nick Meany, Xavier Coates, Cameron Munster, who is named but is 50-50 for this game. You've got Jerome Hughes, Kamakamika, Harry Grant, Josh Kinn, Joe Chan, Alicia Katoa, and Trent Laria loading into the pack of the scrum. You've got Tyron Wishart, Christian Welsh, Chris Lewis, and Alec McDonald with the extended bench of Sean Bloor, Kane Bradley, Jonah Pizzette, Marion Seve, and SF, so I don't butcher another name. A strong team on paper. They have lost a few players. Obviously, most notable, you've got Ryan Pappenhausen coming back into the squad. Like I mentioned, Cameron Munster is 50-50, so it wouldn't surprise me if Jonah Pizzette ends up being that 18th man and he does come into the squad if Cameron Munster does drop out. But Baxter, Pappenhausen's back. He's explosive. When he's at his best, he's arguably one of the best fullbacks in the game. What do you make of this squad? What do you make of Pappenhausen's return? And can Cameron Munster playing, not playing, kind of swing this game in someone's favour? Um, yeah, the time will tell to see if uh, Ryan Pappenhausen gets back to his uh, good old self. I know um, he's eager to get back out there and um, show everybody that he's still got it and he can push for a 14 jersey for New South Wales. Um, Cameron Munster, uh, that's the man that can that can do everything. The man that's got t- uh, the monkey with the two symbols going on in his head during the game, um, he can do anything. So if he wants to take a uh, backseat role and play... Uh, be a Cooper Cronk, uh, was it 2018, 2019 uh, grand final where he'd done his shoulder and he can just sit back and coach the team on the park. Um, he can do it, uh, I, I believe. But if you look at the um, Melbourne draw, right, they go from Penrith at home, then the Warriors at home, then they travel up to McDonald Jones St- uh, Stadium up at Newcastle, and then they've got the bye, then they've got the Broncos uh, all the week after at home. So... That's three out of five games um, they have at home plus the buy. Um, look, I'll be happy. Oh, look, I think Craig might be – he could play the long game and just sort of sit him out this week. Um, I think he got bigger fish, fish to fry. Um, but this could be uh, uh, this could be the game to get in, um, two points given that the opposition coming off a loss um, in a team that just uh, – just uh, don't get uh, World Cup challenges. Um, it is what it is. Well, like you said, it, it is interesting for the Melbourne Storm. And I think it's interesting because, like you said, it could be touch and go. He could rest Munster, make sure he's good to go. But when I look at the teams and I look at, I guess, the teams fighting for that top eight, there's more and more of them coming into it this year that can push for a top eight position. It's almost as if if you don't get a good start to the season, you fall one, two, even three games in a row on, on the bounce with losses, your season could almost be over. And it's crazy to say after three rounds, but I think this is arguably going to be probably one to 12, maybe the most competitive league we've seen in a very long time. But time will tell. Craig Bellamy is the master. He does always get this storm team firing. I wrote him off last year. And like I said, when I wrote him off, I said fifth to eighth, and they proved me wrong after that, and they had a decent crack and ended up knocking my boys out of finals football. But, Baxter, you talk about a team. It is a team that's now lost back-to-back World Club challenges. I guess, as an NRL fan, it kind of, I was like, yes, Penrith lost, but in the same note, I was like, fuck, you just gave them all the firepower they need to go on and win another title. Talk to me about this lineup. Talk me through this lineup, and... Can Penrith go back to back to back to back? Yeah, look, you got the man with no hair, Dylan Edwards at the back. Uh, Sonny uh, and Isaac Toro make the left side of the uh, the defense. Tyler May, Brian Toro make the right hand side. Luai Cleary the halves. Moses Deoda, Luke Summon Summerton, the fish. Luke Gardner, the man with the the most. Uh, grubbiest, revved-up face I've ever seen when he gets going. Liam Martin, uh, Isaiah Yo, the man from Dubbo, Tyrone Peachy, Lindsay Smith, our man, Henry, uh, Liam Henry, Matt Eisenhuth, and Dane Laurie, the man coming from the West Tigers, back to Pem- uh, Pan- Panthers as a junior. Um, Sonny Luke, Brad Schneider, 
uh, Preston Ricky and Maverick Geyer. Yes, that is the one and only Mark Geyer's uh, second son. Um, look, uh, I don't think it's a ammunition. Look, as I look at the uh, the World Cup ch- uh, World Cup challenge uh, sort of stats in here, uh, four times Penrith uh, have been over there to win it, and uh, each time they failed. So. They can sit along the lines with Canberra Raiders, the Hunter Mariners, Newcastle Knights, the, the Dogs, the Tigers, and the Sharks. Those teams, they just uh, they they sit on a zero zero World Club Challenger list. While your boys with five wins out of five, uh, Melbourne three out of one. Um, you got Brisbane two out of three, uh, two wins out of five, uh, and you got the Cowboys one and zero with Dragons and the Rabbitohs. So look, only only the good teams get uh, get World Club challenges. And if um, as that photo went around, if you can't beat them, join them. And maybe Nathan needs to go to the Super League, and so he spends more time with uh, Mary Fowler there over in Manchester. But hey, uh, man, man can dream. Man can dream. Well, we we will talk more about this Penrith Panther side, and I guess where they did fell short, but. Let's, let, let's throw a bit of a positive out there. Obviously, like you said, our man, Lindsay Smith, in the number 15 jersey. I want to shout out a massive congratulations to himself and his partner, Alex. They just had their little boy, Bodie, right before he left to go across for the World Club Challenge. So we hope everything's going all right, and we look forward to obviously meeting Bodie soon. But again, he got to watch you play. It was his first game. He got to watch you lose. But let's hope there is some wins in the future for you. But... You talk about that Dylan Edwards, the man with no hair. He had another, I almost want to say below his best game. And I think he has set the ceiling so high that anything below that is kind of going to look a bit, how you going? But you've got Dylan Edwards. You've lost Stephen Crichton, massive loss. You've lost Spencer Lenu, massive loss. You do get Jerome Luai back from injury here. So I guess To'o, Luai, Cleary, Edwards in the back seven right there. Does it click without Critter? Can they keep moving forward? And again, again, like I said, do you see them going for a four-peat? Uh, again, as I said last year, to, to write them completely off of, of winning another grand final is uh, hilarious. Um, they'll still be in the hunt. Do they get it? Time will tell. Um, they might prove all the data is wrong. You know, they got the belt, which got the uh, three titles on the on their belt, but. Uh, I noticed they didn't make room for the fourth, so maybe they're just sort of going, "Hey, we're not going to win, win this year." But hey, prove me wrong. Um, look, Luai, he's here for this year. Is he thinking about the bit, the mega money coming next year? Um, as November one ticks over, who knows? But who joins him? Because uh, what? Ever since they've won, they made a grand final appearance back in twenty twenty. Two people have seemed to. Have dropped off each and every year, um, starting with Matt Burton and um, Kurt Capewell. So, uh, who, who's going to join the uh, Lua and keep the um, the uh, what do you call it? The superstition going. Every year you win a grand final, have to drop two more players. Win a grand final, drop two more players. Who's going to be next? Lindsay might be playing for Melbourne uh, by this stage. Yeah, I mean, hey, like you said, there, there is a lot of interesting things going around, but. Um, I guess, obviously, for this team, there is talks that Taylor May will sign on. There was a lot of rumours saying that him, his brother and his cousin all wanted to play together. It now does look like he will sign a deal with um, the Penrith Panthers. Terrell will supposedly sign a deal with the Sydney Roosters moving forward. And the other one who has left the NRL, and his name's slipping my mind, but he will stay over in the Super League. So, It looks like they had a dream. It fell apart in a couple of weeks. A few managers were sacked. A few agents were sacked. And it looks like they will sign deals with their respected clubs. So moving Mm. forward, I do think that is a massive signing for Penrith. But enough of us, enough of talking about this lineup, enough of us talking shit about how we do or don't think Penrith are going to go back to back to back to back. And it's starting to become a mouthful. So let's hope they don't. So I don't have to say five of them next year. But it is Melbourne. They're in Melbourne. It's under Bellamy. They have an absolute cracking record in round one. And that is the only reason I'm going to side with them. Unfortunately, this is Wednesday. We are recording this. So we don't know if Cameron Munster is going to play. So if you do jump in on here on Friday night and you're like, what an absolute fuck with his Gordon picks Melbourne and Munster's not playing, 
We're recording this on Wednesday. So we're taking a punt before the final team lists a name. I'm going to go Melbourne. I'm going to go 1-12, to 12, and it wouldn't surprise me if it's even closer. I think it's going to be that 4-6 to six range, if not smaller, and I'm going to go Ryan Pappenhausen to score the winning try. How about yourself? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm agreeing with you here. I'm going to one to I think it's going to be a, a fight for the ages, but I'm going to go my man, Harry Grant, the Queensland legend, uh, to score the winning try. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess Harry Grant is someone you kind of look over because, again, before you said that, I was like, oh, fuck, is Harry Grant even playing? I wasn't sure, but it is going to be an interesting game, and I think more so for Penrith, they need to get off to a good start here. They've got Melbourne. They then face Parramatta at home, who was arguably the only team that really knocked them off twice last year. They then play Brisbane. They then play the Roosters and Manly. So a very tough month, month and a half of football to start their season. Baxter, before we move on, I'll throw you two. It's one for each team. Give me a free position range. Where does Melbourne finish? Where does Penrith finish come the end of the season? I say they both finish in the top four. So they both finish in the top four. So we will get our predictions up. Um, I'm not comfortable in saying which one. I think one of them does miss the top four. And I think, once again, I'm probably going to have to side with Melbourne missing the top four. It'll come back to bite me, but eventually Bellamy's luck does have to run out. But we will put up a bit of an artwork. We'll say where we think is a lock for the eight, who we think is in the mix, and then who we obviously think is a bottom nine lock. So I don't know what we're going to do here. I don't know what I'm you're just looking at. I'm just looking at the Penrith draw, and I'm thinking it's rigged here. It's rigged. As in how hard it is? Nah, it's so it's just ringed against the Cowboys. They go by round six, then they're going to get spanked at Bathurst against the Tigers in the rain again, and then they're going to come out and battle, uh, obliterate my Cowboys in round eight. Then they've got the second bye in round 16. Then they're going to play us and just battle us again because we're going to have all our origin stars out. Um, because uh, you know, Drinky's going to get the jump over Dylan, I reckon. Well, I mean, you've got a man right here that's already feel, sounding broken and we haven't even got to hear his first team this Tuesday of the year and he's already he's already sounding out those... I just, uh, I, just those think it's, I just think it's really rigged. I think it's just rigged. Rigged, rigged, rigged. Yeah. Well, I mean, time will tell. Um, we'll see when we do get to your team. We will see where you have them, roughly where you have them. But Baxter, before we do jump on, obviously, we have spoken about where we think Storm and Penrith will finish. We did miss last game, so just quickly before we sign off, Warriors, Sharks, where do you think they finish and why? Uh, Warriors, I think, will finish uh, between five and eight. Um, Sharks miss out. Um, I think they, I think this year they just, they've just gone from second to, they've gone from top four to top eight. Then it's going to be in the, the top half of the bottom nine. Um, there, so I think they just take a step down, and it's just back to the drawing board for Craig Fitzgibbon. And then um, I think maybe that co- coach extension contract uh, was a bit too soon. Well, I mean, I'll always back my boy Fitz in as long as they're not playing the Roosters. He's a club legend, and I hope he does do well, except for those games where he does play against the Roosters. But Baxter, that is the Friday night games. We will wrap up there. Is there anything else? 